Hello, my name is Father Jude Eli. Welcome to our program, Friars Feast, the art of celebration, where faith, family, and food come together. Today, it's the game show. We're cooking wild game, duck, quail, and venison. And on my right and on my left and in my back, we have John Soper, Luigi Soper, and their cousin, Vinny Del Papa. We're going to cook. This is about home cooking. Young friars, young chefs cooking the game show. Stay tuned. Okay, we're, we are ready to cook our first uh, piece of game. It's going to be venison. And now, uh, John and Luigi. Now, Luigi, most of your family hunts. Uh, we, we, the venison? we all love to hunt. Actually, my, my little sister Catherine shot this uh, mule deer about a month and a half ago, so that's where we're getting the meat today. That's certainly fresh, isn't it? My heavens. Okay, so tell me what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. So first we're going to uh, take the knife and just make uh, even slits across the loin. Mm -hmm. um, take the garlic and, and stuff it in, in the loin. And then with that, we're going to take the loin. Uh, we're going to put it in the pan mm -hmm. with the olive oil. And, uh, and we're going to saute that, uh, get it nice and brown, probably five to six minutes on each side. Sure, sure. And then uh, take that off and then we're going to... Uh, make the, our berry reduction sauce. Okay. It's looking great. It's looking wonderful. When your garlic kind of starts to fall out, that's okay. It doesn't always like to stay in its place, but that crust on the top is exactly what you're looking for, and you just want to get it perfect and nice and medium rare on the inside. Looking good. It's looking really good. Okay, I think it looks done. Why don't we it tent it and keep it warm? Throw that right on the side. Oh, there we go. Wonderful. Now you can see here all the garlic fell off, but that's okay. We're going to take it. Okay, want to put some of that on there? And kind of put it on top. <laughs> and it'll fall off on top, too. <laughs> it doesn't really like to stay on. Yeah. That's all right. Okay, now okay. with this, we're going to cover it and let it set. And now you're going to make the reduction, correct? Yes. Okay, Johnny, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, now for the reduction, we're going to use... Um, the rest of our shallots here, chopped garlic, um, yeah, about hot. two cups of beef broth, and of course our, our berries. And then at the end, we're going to mix in honey and um, some salt and pepper also. So, okay. so go we're going to use pro all of this garlic, really. You sure? Is, okay. Probably, yeah. I mean, probably just a handful. Handful, so. John. It's looking, oh, it looks like 20. Yeah. We nice. do like garlic, but maybe not that much. And definitely all the shallots yeah. here. Now we'll mix in our beef broth. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This is just your regular beef broth. You can buy at your local grocery store. And those are what, blackberries? These are blackberries. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some blueberries, some raspberries. Get that smell. Very, oh, oh, very full. Wonderful. And then now, how, how long does how long does this? Um, you just not too long. You just want to get it to where um, it's it's uh, nice and smooth. But we're gonna use the blender to sure. to, to puree it so it gets more smooth. Mm -hmm. um, but we do want it to let it simmer in here for yeah. a little bit. Okay, John and Luigi. It looks like it's done. Let's go. To reduce. So what we're going to do next is just add a couple tablespoons of some clover honey into there. It thickens it up a little bit, makes it nice and sweet. So you're going to add that into there. Looks good. Give it a quick little mix with this spoon. Boy, that, boy does that look nice. Oh, it's it really, smelling great, yeah, huh? Yeah, it really does. Absolutely. And then our next step is to throw it in the blender to just get it a nice puree while it's still hot so it can go right over our... Okay, we're ready to blend it. Smell good? Mm, mm, Smell good? Mm. Looks good? Smells wonderful. All right, yeah, we're perfect. Let's have a little taste of it. John, go ahead. You, just give a little taste on that. Because you got to check for seasoning. Okay, Need salty. anything? Mm, mm. Oh, it's perfect. Perfect? <laughs> it's oh, good. It's perfect. Oh, <laughs> it's you know what? Let's. <laughs> perfect the first time. A little let's, salt and pepper. Let's add a little great. bit of salt and pepper okay, to perfect. taste. 
That'll be good. And then you try the second taste. That's All right, there I'll... you go. A little bit of dab of salt. Good. There you go. Give it a quick mix. What's really nice is we're using the same contents as we cook the deer in. Yeah. So you, it's oh. kind of, it's, it's, it's the same. It's all that flavor. Perfect. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All righty. Let's see All right, here. let's see how, we, how good of a cookie it is. <laughs> Look good? It's delicious. Really? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, now there's a, again, when you say delicious, that doesn't say anything. Is it hot, salty, sweet? Um, so it's, it's kind of. Is you, there a good balance of. There's perfect acidity balance. Acidity and. Absolutely. Okay. It's a little bit acidic from the berries in Correct. there. Okay. But then Very the good. honey kind of mellows it out, but it also makes it nice and sweet. It's, it's, it's great. It's got a little salt to it from, mm. from the deer cooking in there with salt and pepper on mm. it. And, it's great, a little garlicky flavor. Yeah. Garlicky flavor? Are you kidding? There's got to be a ton of garlic. <laughs> what do you mean? Kind of garlicky, yeah. yeah we don't, okay. don't know how much garlic we put in, enough. Okay. Okay, stay tuned, we will soon plate. Okay, it's time to plate, and uh, since this is a combined endeavor, I'm gonna plate for them. You know, this is the art of celebration. So there's culinary art, there's fine art, and there's the art of celebration with family and friends. You first eat with your eyes, okay? Right, guys? <laughs> it's all about the looks. It's, it's, all, it's all about the looks, right? Yeah, it is. You know, it really is about the look. Okay, that, look, that looks pretty good. And so you make a bed. That's These are cooked good. beautifully, by the way. Perfect. Cooked beautifully. Perfect. Just, perfect. Cook perfect. Beautifully. Just broil them really quick, five minutes. And how about that meat? Yeah, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And one more on this side. Looks perfect. Yeah. Oh, it's spectacular. Oh, my heavens, look at that. <laughs> We're going to eat well today, I'll tell you. It's delicious. <laughs> this is what makes me, you know, I'll be honest, this is what makes me very happy as a Catholic priest, where you have a shared faith, a shared love of food the solidarity of, of uh, family and friends. Gentlemen, I think we are ready. Look at that. And I think it's time for the, uh, the little drizzle of the reduction. Look at it. Oh, my. I didn't have a taste of that. I'm going to have a taste right now. You guys have been, during, during the break, they're eating everything, so. It's delicious. What can I say? Bravo, bravo, <laughs> wonderful guys. And we don't want to color or um, cover it completely. We just want just around. In our show with Cooking with Game, we now have two wonderful Rembrandt etchings dating to the 18th century. Again, Cooking with Game, we're dealing with the land. Let the land feed the people. This is the issue of Rembrandt. So he meticulously etched on copper plating his image, his understanding of the beauty of God's creation and how the land can indeed be, be wonderfully bountiful. We're ready for our second segment. Vinny, what are you going to cook for us? Today I'm going to be doing a roast quail with chestnuts and grapes. Oh my gosh, wow. First off, what we're going to do is we're going to take about a tablespoon of butter, get it going here in this pan, prevents it from sticking. Once we get this butter going here, add a little bit of oil, makes it cook a little better. Mm -hmm. Prevents it from sticking. Yeah. Okay, once we have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some quail in. What I did is I took the breast of a quail and I took off the meat. Um, 
These are fairly thin and you don't want to overcook them. They cook for about one and a half to two minutes at the most. Just get them brown on both sides. Make sure they're looking nice and crispy. Now did you uh, shoot these quail yourself? I shot these quail opening morning. Oh. My uncle loved to hunt. Oh my God. That's wonderful. And then after you have these in the pan, you can pepper them and salt them to taste whatever you like. Get them a nice golden brown. Yeah. And notice what he's doing. He's leaving them alone. The worst thing you can do is to put it in and then start moving them around. They don't develop a crust. So what he's doing is leaving them alone. And you can tell by the, there you go. Yeah, just a little bit more. Yeah. They're getting there. They're getting nice there. Nice little crust on mm. the bottom. Yeah. That smells nice. Mmm. It's the butter smell. It's good. Hopefully it'll taste as good as it <laughs> smells. <laughs> yeah, see, you can, you can tell when it's getting done that the edges turn white. And then they're not, not, not quite, quite yet. yet. Not quite. Boy, that looks nice. So, this is how many quail? This is actually 13. Me and my brother shot these. 13 quail. Boy, the, 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 they don't have much meat, do they? <laughs> no. Nope. Thought, about, thought about throwing some legs in here. They're pretty tiny. Well, you know, we were prepping for this segment. I, I go, Vinny, do you want the legs? I go, no, just the breath. I go, yeah, because they're the small little things. There's not much meat on those. Ah, there we go. See, that's, the, that's the color of flavor look at yeah right there see that is the color of of wonderful flavor there you go they're so delicate they just cook so fast yeah and just like anything else when it's very lean like that with very little fat don't overcook it or it becomes hard as leather so rather have it just done perfectly here there you go that that's a good one there you go My, look at that. Now, unlike duck, where you can have medium rare quail, do you have to cook it all the way through? Yeah, I mean, they're hard not to cook because they're so thin. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you definitely don't want to overcook them because then they become similar to leather. Yeah. Okay, while he's getting these ready, we'll see you for the next segment when, when we make the sauce. Uh, cooking pasta, folks. Remember, it's al dente. You don't want to overcook your pasta. And the only way that you're going to find out if it's done is by tasting it. And also, it tastes because you've added salt to the water. The taste of pasta water should be like seawater. Okay? You want to taste the salt. This is the only opportunity you are going to have to basically salt the pasta noodle. Okay, Vin, so we've put the uh, quail away and it's tented. Next move is what? The quail's all brown. We're going to saute some carrots and some onions in with the leftover fats from the quail and the butter. Get these a nice brown. Don't want to cook them too much. Once these are nice and brown, we'll throw the quail back in here with them. That way it gets the flavor of the onions and the carrots. Okay, and then what about the thyme and stuff like that? Okay, there you go. It's also going to go in here with it. It'll give it a nice flavor. I use about three sprigs of thyme. Gives it a nice kind of zesty, sweet flavor. Boy, that smells so wonderfully. Once you got that in there, get a nice little mix. The onions are starting to clear up a little bit. 
starting to be able to see through them. Translucency, and that's what you want. Okay. And then when you add the chestnuts and the raisins and stuff like that. Chestnuts will go in towards later. Mm -hmm. They'll give it in, they'll give it a nice nutty flavor along with the we didn't have grapes today, but you can substitute that for any type of sweet fruit, whether it be apples, raisins, anything like that. Gives it a nice sweet flavor to go along with the nut. Um, looks like these are just about ready. So put the quail back in here. Get all the juices from the plate in there too. Give it a nice taste. Let these saute for a little bit, and then sit in here for about oh, five, seven minutes, and then after that, we'll come back and um, continue with the recipe. Okay, stay tuned. Say, ah, stewed lamb with artichokes ragu with fried artichokes. It's called Sraccotto de Lanelio de Ragu de Chacofe de Loro de Chips. Interesting, huh? Stay tuned, we're gonna come back. Then, what's the next step? Now that the quail's been cooking for long enough, we're gonna take it back out again and onto the plate. Get it out of the vegetables, let them simmer for a little bit longer. And then after that? After that, we're gonna add in our cognac and the chicken broth and let it simmer for about six minutes or until the liquid's reduced by about half. So now we got the quail out of there. Add our cognac, so give it a nice little sizzle here. Throw in some chicken broth. And then scrape up the fond, which is the, the um, remnant of all the juices that have been caramelized. And that, that's what gives it flavor. Turn up the heat a little bit, get it going nice and, yeah. nice and good. And then once, this, once the liquid's reduced by about half here, we'll stir in the cream fraiche. Gives it a nice smooth flavor. Make a nice sauce drizzle, drizzle over it at the end. Mm -hmm. So this sits now for about five or six minutes. Okay, Ben, let's go. Scoop, scoop off some of the remnants from the bottom of the pan. They give it a nice flavor as well. Mm -hmm. Now that the liquid's reduced by about half, we can go ahead and add our um, cream fresh. Gives it a nice, mix this in with it. Similar to mascarpone. Tastes a little bit more like sour cream, but it gives it a nice creamy texture. This will sit in here for a little while and kind of make it a more of like a sauce and it should be able to coat the back of your spoon, which we'll later end up using to drizzle over the quail. We um, have our orzo over here. It's uh, an Italian orzo with Parmesan cheese in it. Cheese always makes everything better. What can I say? I'm Italian. Yeah. So add some more cheese. Got a little bit of fresh basil. Mix that in with it. Give this a nice mix. It'll be great to serve um, underneath the quail. Put that back on that back on the stove. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Ben. Once this starts to kind of do its thing over here, get nice and bubbly. What you want to do is add the, the chestnuts, which are already pre-roasted. Make sure you cut the X in them or else they'll explode in the oven. That's from experience. Let the air come out of there. You want to add these in with it. You go ahead and add your raisins. These will sit in here for oh, about five to six minutes or until the raisins or grapes or apples go about a shade lighter. That way you know they've gotten cooked through. So we'll let this sit for a little while. 
And then after that, we're just about ready to, um, to plate it, have a nice meal. Oh, stay tuned. Again? Yep. yep. Gotcha. Okay. This is... Okay. Hello, my name is Father Jude Eli. Welcome to our show, Friars Feast, the art of celebration where faith, family, and food come together. Today, we have home cooks, home chefs, young chefs that cook for their family and friends. Today, we have John Soper, his brother Luigi, and his first cousin, Vinny Del Papa. We love to have home cooks on Friar's Feast because that's what faith, family, and food means. The game show. Stay tuned. Very good, Father. Again? <laughs> okay, down for our, our third and final a segment will be roasting duck as well as flambéing duck. We have the cabbage now sautéing in the pan. We'll let that cook for a bit, okay. And I'm going to roast duck. Now this is a wild duck. It's a wild mallard. I've already pre-stuffed it with orange and I'll take some more and stuff it in. Yeah. So this duck has already been prepped with oranges in it, so I'm going to bring this to the oven now, okay. Put her in. And, and earlier this morning, I did another duck. Again, these are wild ducks, mallards. And let's bring it out. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. That looks just lovely. See what happens? The fruit have been the fruit has been caramelized. The duck has released its its fat. I'm gonna just anoint it just a bit. It's gorgeous. Wild duck, not bad. Okay. So while that is cooked, we're now gonna do one of my favorite duck presentations. And that is to saute duck. Stay tuned. Okay, so now I'm going to do duckling breast. First, I'm going to cut the lobes in half. And you got to score them. This releases the fat. And this dish goes rather quickly. So, now that the pan is up to temp, let's add some olive oil. I'm going to add the duck breast. Yes, oh boy, it does this look good. And notice I'm not moving the duck breasts around. You leave them alone so that it can sear the skin. There we go. And now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. Okay, let's see what we're having here. It's almost there. And what I'm going to do now is add a little bit of flavoring, add some orange. And, you know, when you cook for 
uh, various types of people. Some people like astringency with their food and alcohol and all that. Well, I happen to be one of the latter. I like a little alcohol. Not just one alcohol, several. So I have grappa, I have cognac, and I have limoncello. Let's do the little bit of grappa, limoncello, and cognac. There we go. And turn them over. Look, look how brown that is. Isn't that gorgeous? And then this will go into a syrup. Now, I like my uh, duck breast medium rare. I don't like it medium even. I like a medium rare. And so I'm going to keep this going. I for, you know, maybe for about a minute or so. I don't like them too overcooked. But I want the natural alcohol to make a syrup. See? That's called making a glaze. And I, I'm going to turn these over and, and I want to, to uh, continue to glaze them on very high heat. So we, we're just going to wait that for a few more minutes. And uh, what I'm going to do is add a little bit more orange. You see, with the lemoncella and with the uh, grappa and with the cognac, there's a lot of sugar. So it caramelized that wonderfully. So the heat is now off, and I think it's time to plate. Stay tuned. food. We just had our game show with Luigi, John, and Vinny. House chefs, young men that are enthused about faith, family, and food, and the art of cuisine. This is Father Jude Eli saying God bless you, and always remember, when you feed others, you're feeding the presence of God within them. Take care. Let's do it again. This is this is this is normal. Da -da, da -da. Okay, ready, ready. Okay, concentrate. Eli, don't don't touch that damn thing. Okay, ready.